Botarg, our friends. Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here and once again it is time for another Orc Mode workout and today was Max Effort Bench Press Day and it was actually a really good learning day. Um, learned a lot about my leverages today but if I could get you guys to very quickly reach down and click like down below it would be greatly appreciated. Help me keep the likes higher than the dislikes and just run through and click like on my other videos. Um, I would also appreciate that. So the random number generator. I keep having guys ask me, well, how are you picking your list? Why do you do this lift more often? Than it's, I don't. I don't pick it. It's completely random. You guys have seen the chart. In fact, I've got a video coming out in the next week or so showing you guys kind of the chart I use and how I use it. Okay. I don't pick. I don't want to know what lift I'm going to do when I wake up in the morning or go to bed the night before. It's random. Today was dead pen bench. Now, this is done with 10% band tension, which in this case is only about 30 pounds. It's, it's hard for me to get any jump between 30 and 50. Okay, so 50 would be more than 10% of my bench because I can't bench 500 pounds. And 30 is a bit too light, so we just run with the 30. It's fine. Dead pen bench. Try to get it about an inch off my chest. And these were very, very hard at the start. And I tried to use my wide grip bench, which is basically index finger on the ring. Okay. And we know I've been trying to wide grip bench, and I feel like I've progressed on it massively. I feel like I've progressed on it massively. I went to this, and I couldn't break 295 off the pins. Then I jump back over to my closed grip and watch this. Bam. Just pops up. Now, I couldn't break 295. Those of you who've watched already have already seen the 315. I got 315. Now, I had to dig in and push hard. 20 pounds difference. I couldn't break 295 off the pen with the wide grip. There's a point where I go, you know what? I'm just damn stronger <laughs> at close grip. I just need to keep messing with my close grip more. That means we keep building all the musculature. Now, it's all the tricep work and upper back and delt work probably helping it even more probably so. Probably so, because I'm getting thicker up top. Her back and shoulders are getting bigger. Watch this, 305. Just popped right up. This was easier than the 295. Like, I can do 315. Plus bands. Now, there's a little bit of band tension at the bottom, for those curious. The band is not completely slack. There's a few pounds of tension. So it's a hair more than 315 off the bottom, but we're not going to count it. But that 30 pounds is kicking in by the halfway point. Once we've accelerated, so then I have to push through and drive through. Is that 315 off the pins? 315 off the pins. But is that any surprise with the close grip? You guys watched me do sets of 10 with 250 a week or so ago. Look at that. Locked it though. Nice and clean. Set it back down. I was happy with that. So I'm like, well, let me mess with my close grip with the floor press. Now that didn't go so well today. Um, I just couldn't find the right groove. That's historically one of the issues I find is that I feel almost like I strain my left front delt. I almost strain it when I try to close grip. And it's because I don't get the bar low enough when I floor press. When I do this with a bench, I have no trouble reaching my low chest with a, with a close grip. It seems like when I floor press, I struggle to get in that groove, struggle to get the elbows tucked. And with the wide grip, it, it can aggravate my shoulder slightly if I don't get it tucked. But look at what happened there. Notice how much I'm not tucked. And it's because I'm not getting the bar low enough. And I got 275 for a good five right here. Second set, though, it started getting really hard. And then the third set, I got two reps and my shoulder just didn't feel right. So I'm like, I'm done. I'm done. And it's not that it's a shoulder girdle type injury or a rotator cuff injury. It's that I feel the interior deltoid almost like strained in a, in a way to where the actual main delt muscle hurts. Not the rotator cuff. Uh, and it, it's just, it's never been a good angle for it if I'm not careful. So I'll probably go back. I'm like, if I'm going to mess with more closed grip, I can go back and just what I was going to do before, just swap bars. I mean, I've already kind of built the strength that you guys just saw doing the closed grip. Had our little short stint of floor press, but you know, what about five by fives closed grip? How about if I just progress five by five and switch bars every three weeks? To do that too. Or four, four by six, whatever. All falls within Prelopin's chart. Someone asked me how to use a chart. What do you mean? You just look at the chart. How do you use the chart? You use this chart the same way everyone does it. 
If you use it on conjugate, you use the chart the exact same way the Russians did for Olympic lifting. Right? Just that it only works for lower reps. Like if you're doing tens and stuff, it kind of gets screwed up a little bit. Because it's assuming you're doing everything somewhat explosively or moderately heavy weights. But the chart works. It's just that, again, I felt like on that double, it's like I really felt a lot of discomfort in my shoulder. And it didn't affect strength. Like I was able to do standing press just fine next. In fact, we did really good on the standing press. We got a mild PR. But it's just one of those where I just couldn't quite get the bar path right. And I'm like, well, you know, as much as I like the floor press, I think it's suited for the wider grip. It really is. Even the West Side guy said, I've heard Dave, Dave Tate say that. Close grip floor press doesn't seem to do anything for their bench. It's like it should in theory, but it just doesn't seem to help that much. All right. Go back to close grip pressing and rotating bars. The original game plan. Then we did our 5x5 five five with this, bumped it up 5 pounds. Now, for those curious, I'm using a wide grip. It's harder for me. I feel more muscle activation, even though it's more difficult. Uh, the weight is misleading. You're seeing all those small plates on the side. I'm not realizing the axle bar weighs less. It, it's like 155, guys. Just in case anyone's like, oh my god, he's just, he's repping out. But no, it's 155 pounds. Wide grip, though, that's that's difficult for me. But I got five by five, and I felt like I left a little in the tank. I could have got at least one more rep each set. Um, but we'll keep working with it. We'll keep ramping it up. I'll see if I can bump it on speed day coming up, right, after doing closed grip pressing. Which on speed day, we're going to stick to closed grip. My benching, it's, just be honest, I just am so much better at closed grip. No matter what, how long I train wide, I want to be good at wide grip. Maybe not in the cards. Now, at least the overhead pressing, I feel so much more muscle activation, so much more side delt, everything else. I'm going to keep doing this for a while. I might come back in and mess with the closer grip later and see if I'm a lot stronger and see if I can maintain the range of motion I've been getting to where I can actually lock the top. If I can do that with a shoulder width grip, we might mess with that some. Right? Might be worth messing with at that point. But I can build all the musculature just fine with this wide grip. Probably easier on recovery. But again, I feel so much side delt and upper chest relative to this, the really close grip. Closer grip is really front delt for me. Right, it's really front delt. But I want to build my whole shoulder structure. And this brings a lot. And I like it. I like that wide grip. There you go. The upper back and shoulders are definitely coming along. Thank you for those who noticed that earlier. I had someone comment. They could see the difference just in a few weeks. Just hitting stuff at the right angles. And we'll keep doing that, right? Getting a recipe for success. But we are going to be keeping with more and more lower reps. I've done so much high rep work, guys, for so long for a while that I do want to get in and mess with some of these heavier fives and sixes. All right? And particularly for certain lagging muscles, like muscles that, like biceps. I'm going to mess with some six rep curls. You guys are used to me doing really high reps, and I've always done high reps on curls. I've always struggled with biceps. Maybe that's half the problem. Hey, because I have some muscles that are overdeveloped that I don't do a lot of reps for. Right? My quads will grow off doubles and triples. I got big quads. Maybe I should treat the biceps the same way. I'm not saying we need to do doubles or triples. Volume with sixes and stuff. We'll see. We'll see. Maybe you'll mess with it. I want to see if it makes a difference. But I've done tons and tons and tons of really high volume, high reps. We've even done 10 by 10s all through here. While on conjugate. Just want to move some heavy weight, guys. And do so in a way that is not excessive. So again, we kind of use Prelopin's chart for all this. Right? People are like, how do you determine that you don't get hurt? Well, we, we don't overdo it. Right? We don't overdo it. So I decided to do 4 by 6 on this today. Picked a weight that was hard. This was hard for sets of 6. 155 on these JM presses. These are tough. They're tough. Uh, but I felt them. Of course, I still felt that little stupid nagging here. That's the problem I have when I, I do anything like the floor press like that with the closer grip. If it makes me feel that strain in that front delt, I feel it on all my tricep stuff later. Like, it didn't bother me on the overhead press at all. The tricep movements, it will. So I've got to be very, very careful of it. 
like I don't feel anything in it now, but all, both of my tricep exercises I did today, I did feel it near the end. It doesn't, it's not early on, it's once the, everything gets challenging. It's like that strained front delt wants to take over when the triceps get fatigued. And then I feel it. So, again, we just have to be aware of it. But, again, the 4x6 with this, pretty good. Pretty good. Happy with it. I uh, feel like there's there's room in the tank for this. But, by that same token, um, I may mess over, so I'm going to start messing more with the bench again. Just set the bench back up. Do these on a bench, set safeties. But, if I need to do reverse bands or I need to do chains. Because I thought about switching bars. I'm like, I could go over to the J, the. Uh, axle bar if I need to yeah I could it's an option or I could just mess with other stuff bands chains whatever we need to do whatever we need to do to keep it flowing to keep CNPRs but again going heavier on it four by six we'll see if we can beef these triceps up but again we can feed the JM press with smaller tricep movements right we know the JM press will feed the close grip bench so how do we feed the JM press we can do it with an even smaller movement something I will be doing today which you guys will see later I'm going to keep always evolving the tricep training because like with everything else we, we have to be able to change this stuff up to keep progressing all the time I need to always make progress we need to always get stronger if that means we do lift variations and that's what we do but we need to keep seeing that bar weight increase we need to be progressing on stuff all the time all the time to keep getting stronger even if it's your rep work But, again, all these fives and sixes, it feels a lot a lot more orky, doesn't it? Kind of goes with that whole theme of orca mode training, especially once I start doing the all these Olympic-type lifts. But you guys are seeing me do the snatch grip high pulls, which are coming up next. And, yes, I've been doing axle bar cleans on my off days for five rep sets, lots of them. All right, I've been doing them all my off days the last few, the last week or so. Now, off days means off days, restoration days. It doesn't mean deload. I think people need to remember my deload weeks, I don't train. So guys, don't ask me, well, why don't you film deload weeks? I don't go anywhere near a barbell on my deload weeks. Okay? I don't go anywhere near a barbell. And before anyone says that's not logistically possible, I don't see how you, how you do that. Well, it shouldn't be too hard to figure out. I'm not going to spell it out. I don't go within a hundred yards of a barbell. How's that? To my knowledge, I do load. So, snatch grip high pulls up to the weight. Now I'm having to explode more. I'm having to explode more, and that's good. That's what we want. And yeah, I definitely are feeling these now. Uh, we feel I'm feeling so much more muscles involved now that I'm having to explode. I'm getting them really wide. I'm on a true snatch grip. As well ask what do you mean by snatch grip? My index finger is on the wider ring, not the inner ring, not on the bench press ring. Again, using that hip extension, driving, exploding. But I feel my entire shoulder girdle, my traps, I feel my upper chest. All right, that's what we want. We can do these every workout for a while. Some eventually I'll start rotating in like some cleans and stuff in place of these on certain days. Got to figure out what days I'll do them on. I'm going to keep these in at least some no matter what. Because uh, again, they're such a low skill explosive lift. So I'll be talking more about the need for some of that. And I think people need to again understand the difference between power cleans versus a full clean. And that's a, another thing. Power cleans are what athletes do to get more explosive and thicker and bigger. And more powerful. Okay. They're not full cleans. They're not what weightlifters do. And they don't have to look the same. They're not the same. I'll serve the same purpose. So this is the same sort of thing. This is just a big power movement. That's a lower skill, low technique exercise, right? We don't have to have a great degree of technical proficiency to do this. We just have to explode. We have to pull it correctly. And again, I feel it where I want to feel it. And I'll, I'll get better with it over time, no matter what. Even though it's a low skill lift, there's always some technique involved. But, uh, again, this really fits into the whole orc mode theme. And I think when I start throwing chains and stuff on some of these, it fits with it well. 
And that's the beauty of conjugate. We tailor our supplemental work around our specific needs. That's the thing that people don't grasp. We don't change the base template on conjugate. And that's what I hate when people say stuff. Well, can I shit? No, 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 no. Do not change the max effort work and dynamic effort work. You do the shit the way you're supposed to. There, I said it like a dick. Because people need to hear that. No, you can't take box squats out. No, you can't take speed pulls out and only do one or the other if you have any ability to do so. Yes, there might be equipment limitations. You're in a place where you can't deadlift. I have a client like that right now. Cannot deadlift where he's at. Short term, because his gym's closed and he's training at home. He's got some stuff, but he can't deadlift because of the floor. Okay? We can't speed pull. That is not ideal. Okay? Quit saying, oh, can I just take some of the benching out and replace it with max effort pull-ups? No. You need to press. You don't change the base template. You don't change the base template for the MEDE. This is what you change, all this stuff. You customize the supplemental work. And it needs to always be geared towards making your big lifts bigger. Uh, we do lots of upper back, triceps, hamstrings, all that stuff. We do all those things. Low back. Right? This is very much within the, the original theme of work mode, isn't it? Big, powerful movements trying to get thick. Same thing. Did the uh, 10 by 3 sets of 10, I mean, on the snatch grip rows. And I'll start taking those over to 6s as I start adding more and more weight to the bar. There'd be days where I just want to use the same weight. So I might go over to 4 by 6 on these or just start adding, stacking weight up. Adding weight, go to 4 by 6s on these. They'll be fine. I do 4 by 6 on this 4 days a week. Until I feel that my shoulders are healthy enough to do the ring pull-ups. And yes, I have the rings. I have them now. I just haven't messed with them. I want to make sure that my shoulders feel 100% and they don't ever make any sounds. Because to me, that's a, a dead giveaway that there's still some inflammation from those chin-ups where I, I did those and they caused inflammation. If I can lay in bed and move my shoulder certain ways and I hear any crackling. Not painful. And it's not even the one that was bothering me. It's the other shoulder. But if I hear any crackling, that needs to go away. Until all of that is fully gone, I'm not even going to try to mess with those ring pull-ups. Eventually I will. In the meantime, I can do tons of rows. I can do rows all four workouts. Ah, again, went with the curls. I'm like, let's get some biceps in. Biceps are the one thing that probably doesn't get addressed enough only in strength training like this as it carries over to guys saying I want to look good okay let's come back over train to get thick and powerful and strong like a strength athlete and then do some curls problem solved and then diet down later of course I'm slow dieting down right now ways to go get another 10 pounds of fluff off and then we'll see I might drop 20 pounds I don't know I'll figure it out long as I keep getting stronger, I can I can stay in a very, very small calorie deficit for a long time if I need to. As long as the diet is dialed in good, nutrition's good, sleep's good, and I keep the training on point. As long as I can gain strength, I'm fine with it. I don't mind losing a little bit of body weight for a very, very extended period of time and getting leaner as long as I'm getting stronger. Okay? That's the main thing. That's the thing that worries me. It's that we need to always make progress. That's one reason I don't cut too lean, ever. You need to be getting stronger. But these were tough. Four sets of six. Last set was really challenging. Uh, and it's not that heavy. I was curious because I, I don't have all the... I'm using a bunch of smaller plates. It's harder to add up for you guys. It's 100 pounds. Just 100 pounds. I'm assuming my bar is 10. I've never weighed that bar. I would need to actually look. It might be 11. It might be 12. It might be 9. I, I haven't looked at the manufacturer. I forgot. I'm just estimating it's a 10-pound bar. So if it is, that's 100 pounds. And that's hard for me to curl. But here's the thing. I need to just make my biceps stronger. I'm actually curious if, if it works like a lot of the other muscles in my body. If, they, if I just get stronger, they get bigger. Well, if I get my biceps stronger with a bunch of sets of six. Right? Maybe they'll grow. Start growing like some of the other muscles do. I mean, they've grown a bit from the other stuff. Then we did floor skull crushers. Now, these felt good. They're interesting. It's just that it started bothering that left shoulder from the floor press, which will be gone in a few days. That's not a problem that stays. It's temporary whenever I get it. Um, and again, it's totally different from the stuff that gets messed up from pull-ups. Totally different problem. Uh, but I don't get it from the normal close gripping. So 
I'll go over to normal close grip on Thursday and see if it's gone and we'll keep working on these and I've got to mess with the different grip positions I'm doing really narrow on this maybe wider grip will be better but the whole point is that you guys get the point it's a it's technically a partial research on it is good a lot of power lifters use it there's really good data showing great muscle activation on it in spite of that but it hits the heads of the tricep that we need to hit while minimizing tendonitis okay and this should carry over really nicely to my jm press because if i get stronger at the jm press bench will go up but this will help put more meat on the triceps in general and i just did four sets of 12 today with this weight and i i couldn't quite finish it i think i, I failed like rep 12 or something like that on the final set. I couldn't quite get there after four sets. So this weight became challenging. It wasn't that bad on the first set, but it started getting challenging pretty quickly. So I picked a pretty appropriate weight. Uh, but again, unique exercise, different exercise. I can do the same thing with this though. I mean, this is one of those that I can replace the rolling extension with because people are like, oh, you need different dumbbell. No, not really. I can just do a different exercise. Those dumbbells work great for the really high rep range. 25s are great if I want to do a bunch of sets of 20. I want to go any any heavier though they're, they're just not going to work for me. But an exercise like this can and doesn't it do very very similar? It's a very similar exercise in regards to the way it works the tricep. Right? Get my triceps thicker, get them stronger without causing any tendonitis. Right? And this will add to it. Because again my training right now is very tricep dominant, very upper back dominant, very hamstring and hip dominant. Those are very, very high priorities for me right now. So adding this extra tricep exercise just to make sure we're getting maximum recoverable volume on the triceps just needs to be done. But all in all, good workout. Happy with it other than just the way the floor press has felt today. Everything else was great. Happy with everything else. Happy with that PR. Good learning experience. And everything went well. So I hope it has been informative. And I will talk to you guys next time.